Hey, I've got a really good success story here from a young man called Jordan. So it goes like this. Hey Agnes, just wanted to reach out and share my story. I'm a 28 year old gay guy from New York City. I met my specific person last year while at an audition. He's a pianist and I am an opera singer. We were instantly attracted to each other and he was coming on very strong. We dated for about five months before he, we had a bit of a breakup the first time where he said he felt distant and, and that things were not working. However, we got back on track after I tried and tried to convince him about how things would be better. We continued to date for another three months or so and I knew that he was a bit insecure and that something was wrong with my insecurities as well. After I spent a bit of time long distance with him while we were both at summer music festivals, I could feel him pulling away after I'd left visiting him for the weekend. All weekend he was distant and cold and not texting or calling. Then one day he called and said that he wanted to break up because his, feel, his feeling alone and misunderstood because he was feeling alone and misunderstood. I have a lot of experience with guys and I knew that it would do me no good to beg and plead. I said my piece about wanting to work it out and text him only once to try and reconcile. When his answer was a solid no, I cut contact for about a month. The day of the breakup and the weeks after, something absolutely amazing happened. I was in the pits of despair. I was extremely suicidal, crying profusely while I felt the grief take my body over. I knew deep down that he was the love of my life and that I had somehow pushed him away subconsciously. I knew that the breakup was not entirely my fault, but I realized that the pattern of unavailable men had become so arduous and insane that I could not continue like this. Something was wrong with me. Not in the proverbial sense that I was inherently flawed or something, but the way I was approaching, approaching my attachments was all wrong. Waiting to die is how you know that your self-loathing has reached an all-time high. Over the next few weeks, I began to learn more about codependency and attachment trauma. I learned that I had been approaching relationships from a position of lack. I needed to find the inner child in me that grew up in an abusive household. I realized I was attracting everything and everyone into my life that was in line with this feeling of pain, suffering and self-loathing. There were several days where I would sit in meditation, I started doing this to feel better and I would envisage myself as an adult rushing in to save myself as a kid about to get hit or screamed at by my narcissistic father. I would envisage myself holding and comforting myself as a seven-year-old kid. It was extremely painful but oh my god was it necessary. I have always believed in the law of attraction Abraham Hicks was always something I listened to in times of stress. But something about the meaningfulness of this breakup and the love I felt made me know that all those times I had felt like I wanted to know myself more were coming to a head. I realized that the healing must come from within. I started listening to you, your videos every night after first meditating on my own right before I fell asleep. I coupled this envis envisaging self-love and acceptance by no means were my days absolutely joyous but I felt marginally better and able to understand where my attachment trauma was coming from and why I had become emotionally distant depressed and extremely needy inside my relationship I visualized it's reuniting and my being able to tell him exactly how I realized I was affecting our dynamic I began to visualize us married and in a beautiful apartment during fall in New York where we could make a delicious breakfast and go to the museum together all the while picturing myself as this completely whole and self-assured version of me. I started to feel this way every day and bit by bit over the month of no contact I received signs. This was an old, there was an old woman who came to me and touched me while I sat on a stoop writing. She asked me what I was writing about. I said I'm writing to my love. I realized that if I were ever going to get the chance to see my specific person again, I would need to do this real and integral work. 
Finally, one day after the month was up and his birthday was the day before, I was feeling like I really, really should call him. I had resisted this urge throughout no contact and even had a moment during your send love to your specific person video where I began to weep because I realized that true love is not needy or demanding. It is freedom. And I began to realize that I really only wanted the best for him. Beautiful moment, Jordan, beautiful moment. I needed to begin to feel whole on my own without him there. All the while visualizing with your videos was taking place. This particular day I was moving to a new neighborhood and I was going to do this completely on my own. I was cleaning my room and I felt very sad that I had thrown out all mementos from him. However, when I finally was dismantling my bed, I found a card from him when he had gone to Sydney. He sent me this cute little postcard with the opera house on it and said, someday you will sing here. Jordan, that's funny because I'm heading to Sydney in less than, well, in about a week. And I'll be seeing that opera house, little synchronicities. So, and I felt so overwhelmed and joyful. I picked up the phone and called him. It went to voicemail. I hung up. Seconds later, he called me. I picked up. The conversation was short and nice. I told him I was moving that night. He asked if he could help me move. The funny thing is I had wondered if I should ask him this several weeks ago when I was needy and was looking for excuses to see him. And there he was offering to help me. Anyhow, we met up and he helped me a great deal. And while we were sitting in the car, it all came out of me. I told him how I'd been learning to love myself, that I had contributed my negativity to the breakup and that I was proud of him for doing what he did. I told him my gratitude and that I was very excited to be healing myself. He started crying and told me how much he loves me and how proud of me he is and that it is great that we both took time and space. Very beautiful and touching, Jordan. I honestly do not think this is a coincidence. I kissed him goodbye, knowing that he had heard me talk of giving him unconditional love. I told him I wanted him to be free and to make the choices that are best for him. In our kiss, I could feel our souls finally met for the first real time. I am moving to Hawaii for about three months where I will be performing with the Hawaii Hawaii Opera Theatre. If anything, I feel completely connected to the powers of the universe and I can continue to offer him this unconditional love for as long as I live. (sighs) I am enough and I am powerful and I can rest easy knowing that he knows he is immensely loved. We have plans to resume when I come back. He truly is the love of my life and I have discovered my true healing within. If it, it would not have been possible without you and yes. That's lovely, Jordan. Nor without my intention to manifest my specific person. Whew! Beautiful. Very touched by that. So... Jordan's email is going to be down below and I'm going to go and collect myself.